All right, what's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is the Earthmaster back here on this uh, Tuesday night, right? I think we're Tuesday. Yep, February 21st, 2023. It's about uh, 9.45 in the p.m. out here along the West Coast in California. A little late, but hey, uh, better late than never out here, right? That's the way I see it. Uh, looking at the latest earthquake, a 2.9 continuing there into the Turkey region. That activity will continue for a little while, no doubt. All right, let's go ahead and check out activity. Uh, kicking up out here across the globe, or across the flat scale model, however you want to look at it. Did see a little bit of adjustment uh, kicking up out here along the Izu Trench, just off the coast of Japan there. Did see a 5.1 and a 4.9 today. A little bit of seismic in increase here along the area of that trench. Did see a little bit of deeper movement down dip here uh, over the past couple days. So a little bit of adjustment taking place along the Izu Trench. Nothing showing up here northward along the Japan Trench or the Kurokamachaka Trench. And a look at the model here. The EMSC model verifies that. Nothing being reported by any agency out there. Uh, throughout the Indonesia area, I know it looks pretty calm across here. Uh, we did see uh, a little bit of activity this morning around the uh, Banda Sea over here, 5.0, and also some adjustment just shy of the northern end of the Java Trench. Been watching that pretty closely here. That earthquake struck right around our watch area, this region northward. Uh, has been very quiet and it's a major accumulator of some stress out there so uh, might be a telltale sign of some uh, future quake activity on the larger side uh, soon for that region uh, speaking of the quietness here there's looks like it's kind of dying off a little bit there's some threes out here around the banda sea and the indonesia area but uh, yeah generally speaking this is kind of quieted down a little bit and most of the activity has shifted westward around Turkey once again, the Mediterranean region and um, areas around, let's see exactly where this is at, 3.6 coming in. Um, goodness, I'm not 100% uh, certain how to pronounce that. So I'm not even going to tonight. Uh, Missy Mimi's ain't here to uh, help me out with that. But 49 kilometers north-northeast of Iran, that's a good location. Kind of gives you the general idea of where that's at. All right, as um, far as earthquake movement goes in Tur in the uh, Turkey area, let's go back up here. Speaking of, well, hold on a second here. Bouncing back and forth. Iran did see some activity down here. Um, 5.3 and a 5.1 in the last 24 hours. Okay, Turkey. A uh, couple low-grade fours kicking off here. Now, the USGS not showing every single earthquake out there been quite a few twos and some threes uh, and even the EMSC model here um, right here still showing quite a few twos and threes out there over the last 24 hours uh, with a noticeable shift in activity here across the west uh, that includes areas around the Crete area and up around the Mediterranean Sea some smaller quakes taking place there, not showing up on the USGS map Iceland, uh, that earthquake coming in this morning, 5.1, just after midnight, late last night. Nothing else showing up here across the area of the Atlantic. Uh, things very quiet here for now. Off the coast here in Morocco, it looks like in the strait, did see a 3.1 and a 4.1 uh, and a 1.9. South America region, uh, aside from a couple fours, things are uh, relatively quiet there for now. A uh, noticeable uptick here around the Caribbean plate, though. That includes areas east and the west here. Uh, this is a, uh, a little bit of shift. It shows a little bit of shifting around here. This is a very small plate uh, that is being uh, moved and bullied, so to speak, between a couple other larger plates. Uh, did have some activity off the coast. Most recent one here shows a 4.3 in the El Salvador area. Just offshore, 59 kilometers deep here into the Middle America Trench. Now some activity throughout the day today. Further east along the Caribbean plate here, including a 4.3 south of Haiti, 16 kilometers deep. And a little bit of activity once again up around the Puerto Rico Trench filling in. 
3.9 and a 3.4. Uh, but definitely overall seismic activity on the increase here. Uh, roughly about, it seems like the northern segment here of that uh, plate. All right, uh, eastern portion of the states here. Looks fairly quiet over here. Uh, Texas rumbling a little bit with earthquake activity. Looks like the last one, uh, 2.3, 8 o'clock this morning. Did see some further movement out here around Snyder, Texas. Out uh, just off of this, uh, well, let's see what's out there. I think we've checked this area before. I know there's some uh, oil pumping operations within the vicinity, but uh, occasionally we're seeing some odd earthquake activity uh, in these fields about uh, 1.1 kilometers deep. Very shallow earthquake activity, 2.6 earlier today, uh, just outside of the Snyder, Texas region. Definitely some oil fields within the vicinity of that quake. Oklahoma, uh, looks like most of this from this morning. A couple ones and some, even a 2.6 here. Into the Yellowstone National Park area, not a whole lot going on, but... Uh, just for fun, we're going to check it out. Uh, doesn't look like any um, noticeable uptick. A couple small, very small microquakes here in the vicinity of the northwest corner of Yellowstone National Park, but that's about it. No magma movement, no doom and gloom to speak of there at Yellowstone. Up into the state of Washington, a little small microquake activity here. Well, as we look at that, I, I was looking at this map here, the Pacific Northwest, and I'm looking at this list right here, and it's like, okay, there's maybe one or two earthquakes in here. But as I zoom in, that list doesn't go down. So that tells me right there, definitely seen uh, a little bit of a swarming going on here across the summit area of Mount Rainier. Uh, let's see what we got here. Not a big swarm, but looks like the largest is a, is a uh, 1.8. And I would say that's somewhat of the large, uh, somewhat of a, a moderate magnitude for this area in terms of recent activity. Most of the small microquake activity we see is well below 1.0. So this is a 1.8 on the western side of the Mount Rainier area. Kind of interesting there. So let's see what we got uh, for um, before we get into that real quick trimmer map tonight. A little bit of movement on the northern end and on the southern end of the Cascadia. 168 epicenters. All right, uh, Mount Rainier. I want to check out the seismograph and see what's going on. Unfortunately, there's not a specific seismograph up here at the summit, which is... Um, um, I, I don't know why they don't have one. you think they would. It's a beautiful uh, volcano. Um, well, I guess we're going to check this one here and see if this is picking up the activity or not. Eh, kind of hard to tell. There's definitely some earthquake activity out there uh, in the last couple hours in the UTC time. Notice the UTC time uh, reset there about six hours ago. Looking at seismic data here, that's got to be the 1.8, a little bit more larger magnitude uh, but yeah, there's definitely a, a few earthquakes popping off out there. I've always thought some of these smaller readings here, these little little spikes are like ice quakes. We see them more often in, in the wintertime when there's snow uh, up there on the uh, volcano. But this here, definitely uh, some seismic activity in terms of earthquake activity. So nothing major going on. I'm not seeing any uh, magma movement or any type of Harmonic trimmer, just a couple small microquakes kicking off there at the uh, Mount Rainier Volcano in Washington. Northern California, what do we got here in the valley? Just outside of Willows, a 2.0. This is a very shallow earthquake striking out here uh, about 2 o'clock or so. I'm actually very familiar with this area. Got a lot of rice fields, but also at the same time, they've been doing quite a bit of, uh, oh, uh, putting in a whole bunch of new drills, uh, water wells, I should say. Everyone out here in this area of the valley is going from rice fields to orchards. 
in terms of you know the uh, supposed drought that's out here. Um, these things kind of look like. Look at that. Let's see where we're at here. One sixty-two. Now, obviously, I know there's some houses out here. Those almost look like oil pumping operations, but I don't think so. Um, but every single one has this little black area. Notice this little black, um, like a wastewater disposal well. So that's um, that's actually very interesting to see that. I've I've never. Uh, I'd have to use Google Earth to zoom in here, but it kind of looks like some some type of oil pumping operation out here. I'm going to go check that out, I think, tomorrow and see what's uh, going on. Either way, uh, this earthquake, a 2.0, occurring out here in just a field. Um, definitely a ways away from the main highway here, which is 162. Goes into Willows and over here towards Highway 45. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll check that out tomorrow and see what's going on. Either way, a little bit of, little bit of earthquake activity kicking up out there. Uh, let's see what else we have. The Clear Lake Volcanic Field, uh, very active. Of course, this is another area that utilizes uh, the dynamics below, uh, which is a heated surface. A vo Clear Lake Volcanic Field, very active below the surface. Uh, but humans are uh, they're very... Um, very smart in terms of creating new ways of creating energy, right? There's a lot of uh, hydrothermal plants out here. And hopefully they know what they're doing. All right, um, let's see here. A little bit of activity south of Lake Almanor, it looks like. Around the Skinner, uh, Skinner Flat area. Indian Valley Fault, uh, a couple different faults, fault uh, systems up there. Bay area, relatively quiet. A little bit of small quake activity here along the uh the creeping segment of the san andreas vault a little bit of activity further down south um a little bit of movement here just off the san jacinto fault zone this area has been relatively active over the last couple days haven't really seen any adjustment any migration uh, a lot of times we'll look for some further movement away from this area if we're, if we're seeing a swarm and right now we're not really seeing any activity up and down the San Andreas Fault for now which is a, uh, a good thing. Alaska, a little bit of activity across the region but this is all very typical up there no major adjustment taking place there currently. Down into New Zealand we only got one earthquake here listed on the map of 4.6 but uh, there has been some further activity down into the region of the uh, New Zealand area and actually up north as well. Looks like we got a 4.9 into the Tonga Trench area. Pretty deep earthquake. South of the Fiji Islands, 520 kilometers deep. Uh, this one coming in at 0359 uh, UTC time, which was, um, when was that? We got their Yellowstone popping a little earthquake here. Maybe? kind of weird I notice it and it disappears you guys seen that right there it is it's a little localized earthquake but uh 0359 that was uh, a good two hours or so ago EMSC reporting it the USGS not so much um, but either way a little bit of activity within the region and let's see what we got here at the GeoNet servers real quick Eight hours ago, 4.9 South Island, New Zealand. Now that is uh, a little bit different of a magnitude compared to 4.6 to a 4.9, but uh, the GeoNet servers here reporting a 4.9. Uh, South Island, northern end of South Island, it looks like there was some uh, reports here, about 4,000 did you fill it reports from this earthquake. Uh, mostly weak to light shaking. You can see the vicinity uh, here on the map of the uh, Did You Feel It reports all over the area, including Wellington region. We did see some activity, of course. Remember here uh, last week or so, a little bit of activity around the um, 
Oh, oh goodness, what is this area? The Cook Strait, I think. Cook Strait, yep. We did see that larger earthquake here in the region. Uh, let's go back here and see a 5.7. That's a magnitude. I can't can't keep up with all these magnitudes. Uh, but we've noticed a little bit of migration here, uh, working its way southward. Uh, mostly away from the plate boundary itself. Uh, this er earthquake there into the uh, Cook Strait area was 74 kilometers deep. This one down south, uh, about 57 kilometers deep or so. But a little bit of migration that seems along the plate boundary here of the uh, uh, the Alpine Fault, I believe it is, in that region of uh, New Zealand. All right, uh, I think that's about it. Um, by the way, um, real quick, I know I talked to Timothy here earlier. He's got a really cool site checked out and uh, got it back working how it should be. <laughs> a little bit of miscommunication on that, but uh, Timothy's got a really awesome site in terms of a bunch of information when it comes to the sun, um, webcams across the globe. Uh, I really like this layout right here in terms of all the imagery of the sun. Um, and it's uh, definitely well worth a visit there to his site. Uh, it's New Zealand Quakes to Online. And uh, it's pretty cool. Go check it out. There's uh, And there's a lot more stuff on here besides just sun imagery. Uh, but he does have quite a bit of drums out here. I mean, it's very nicely laid out. I would love to uh, uh, have a live stream with all of this imagery on. But it's you know almost impossible to have this much um information on here but if you're looking for uh, a pretty cool layout and easy simple method of viewing some uh, really cool stuff check it out there that's the uh new zealand quakes online site from timothy or one of our moderators and members here on the channel uh definitely check that out and uh, space weather, just uh, real quick, uh, looking at a couple different sunspots here that are somewhat noteworthy. This one over here uh, is producing a little bit of solar flare activity, I think, even as we speak. Uh, let me see the latest imagery. Yes, it is flaring. And it's been flaring off and on all day today. Um, don't know if this thing's going to produce the next flare or not. Uh, it does look like potentially it has the possibility a 15 percent chance for an x flare probability uh, from these sunspots m flare at 50 percent chance 99 percent chance for a c flare and i think our main culprit right now in terms of uh back off here in terms of uh dynamic activity is going to be this regional sunspot up here and this guy right here and looking fairly dynamic getting a lot of different colors here mixing in around a main uh, cell of the sunspot 3230 and 3234 we'll continue to watch these sunspots uh, again we're looking at an m flare popping up here low grade m flare but uh, that is coming from that northeastern side of the sun sunspot continue to watch that uh, for some further activity as it rotates into view there is a coronal hole here 79 which is positioned about center disk of the sun. Uh, depending on if this thing continues to grow or not, uh, will be centered directly lined up with the Earth and uh, could enhance some solar weather conditions here uh, in a week or so. Continue to watch that as well. Right now the forecast is green, and that means, well, not a whole lot of greenery up there in the nighttime sky. The aurora forecast very minimal across the higher latitudes for now all right folks um have a good night uh we will chat at you guys just a little bit later on um tomorrow sometime until then uh take care we'll get into the weather a little bit more tomorrow uh, we're still looking at some low elevation snow in northern california uh tomorrow will be a key model in the weather forecast to uh in terms of you know what's actually going to happen uh, so i'm waiting for the latest update to come out we'll cover that tomorrow morning sometime uh, in terms of the um, very cold air coming to the western united states there with very low snow level um, 
some possibilities in Northern California. And of course, I think Oregon, Washington, you guys are all going to get a bunch of snow up there. But uh, here in the Sacramento Valley, the last time it snowed here, uh, where I live, um, was back in 2001. So that's, uh, you know, that's 21, 22 years ago. It's, uh, it's a long time. We don't get snow all that often here in Northern California in the valley. The mountains, yes, but uh, definitely not all that often in the valley. So it's kind of rare. We need to uh, keep an eye on that uh, because it uh, obviously it's a rare event. <laughs> I want to be able to experience it uh, considering its rarity. Have a good night, folks. We'll catch you guys back here tomorrow sometime. Peace out.